three weeks. Well, apparently we're live now on, on Facebook. And obviously, as soon as I did that, Steph froze up. But you're back now, which is great. So I apologise. The ladies who have been sitting here in the studio will know that uh, I've had some technical. I can speak. I've had some technical difficulties on my own this morning. <laughs> unfortunately, that had nothing to do with the uh, alcohol I consumed last night. Uh, but we're alive now. So anyway, um, I'd like to uh, welcome you to the latest offering of Sanctuary Sports sponsored Soul Meats. Uh, today we're joined by co-host Ellie Dixon and former Southern Ladies captain Stephanie Bannon. Uh, but before I get to the formal introductions. I want to announce that we'll be giving you the chance to win a shirt from from the Terraces. Uh, for those of you that are unaware of their offerings, you can check out their quality apparel at uh, fromtheterraces.co.uk. Uh, now, remember to listen carefully during the talking, as at the end, you'll be asked to provide the answer to our question to be in with a chance of winning. Okay, then, to the introductions. First and foremost, Ellie Dixon. Ellie's written right through and through, formerly of Ripon City FC and now applies her trade in the River States Conference for West Virginia Tech's women's soccer team. When she's not representing the Golden Bears, she's supporting the Sons of Liberty as our West Virginia affiliate. And today, she'll be co-hosting our talk in with the one and only Steph Bannon. Welcome, Ellie. Thanks for joining us. I'm sure you're excited Hello. and a little bit Thank nervous. You. I'm, I'm not telling nice anybody. <laughs> well, yeah. You should see the one I've got for Steph. <laughs> Are you ready, Steph? I'll, I'll be sitting okay. down. Okay. All right, you ready then? Rightfully described <laughs> as a footballing legend, Bannon joins <laughs> Sunland AFC at 14 years old. She'd make her first full-team debut at the age of 16 in a 3-1 win against Doncaster Bells. Recognised for her strengths and leadership abilities, Stephanie would be handed the captain's armband by former manager Mick Mulhern at the age of 18. Bannon would captain the Lady Black Cats to an FA Cup final in 2009 against Arsenal, where there were only uh, sorry, there was only a last minute goal from top flight champions Arsenal edged them out, edged Sunderland uh, out of the game. Three consecutive National Premier League titles between 2010 and 2013, promotion to the FA Women's Super League uh, won in 2014, and she'd also help the Lady Black Cats secure an FA Women's Premier League Cup in 2012. In 2012-13, she was also named the WPL Player of the Year. Banner would become the first female player to reach 200 appearances for the Lady Black Cats. In fact, at the time of her retirement, she'd make no fewer than 211 appearances for Sunderland. That puts her above the likes of Nick Pickering, Seb Larson, Gabby Adini, Pop Robson, Huli Walker, Jody Craddock, Stan Cummins, Danny Collins, to name but a few, in the history of club appearances. The success of Bannon has been made all more credible by the fact that she had to juggle playing football uh, at the top level with her with a job as a PE teacher at Unity City Academy in the borough. So even though Sunderland Lee's had a professional players in the past, Steph went the extra mile to support both careers. A legend in her own right, she'd score a first goal for Sunderland in the weird time derby. Look at you scoring against Newcastle. Fantastic. Uh, Steph's renowned throughout the club as a very supportive individual who often gave up her time for the betterment of others. Described by current and previous managers, coaches and players as committed, devoted, a leader and dedicated, she put her heart and soul into Sunderland AFC. In late 2019, Steph was voted into the starting 11 of Sunderland AFC Ladies Team of the Decade. Bannon would end her association with the club after announcing her retirement in 2017. Her final game came in a one-all draw against Reading, which would see Sunderland finish fifth in the Women's Super League Spring Series. That was in, that was June 3rd. If you remember that day, I'm sure you do. Uh, to quote a local tabloid, Beth Mead may have captured more headlines at Sunderland and the likes of her old lady, Black Cats teammates, Lucy Bronze, Steph, I, I was going to say Houghton, but Houghton, uh, Jordan Nobbs, Jill Scott and Demi Stokes might have had higher profiles, but no one has made the contribution to Sunderland ladies like Stephanie Bannon. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Bannon. Hey, what do you think of that, that, Steph? That what do you think of that? Hey, yeah, I was up all night writing that. Hey, got some <laughs> memories back that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, thank, thank you for yeah, joining us, us ladies, today as well, so I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm sure they're clapping at home anyway, if nothing else. So, Steph, what are you up to these days then? Uh, yeah, obviously, uh, retirement's really good. Uh, don't have to travel as far and as long days anymore. Um, as you mentioned there, obviously, I'm still a teacher. Um, but obviously, one of the reasons that I decided to retire was to try and pursue that career um, within teaching. And I felt like, you know, I was probably doing both jobs at the end quite hard heartedly. Um, and I wasn't really a very good teacher and I probably wasn't even a very good footballer by the end. Uh, so actually, I decided that it was time to give one up. 
um, and I became ahead of year, so I'm currently in charge of 155 uh, little Middlesbrough children. Um, oh, Lord. I'll take all the way up. So, yeah, it's, it's exciting times ahead. Did they ask for references before they appointed you ahead of year? Uh, I'm I just did, checking, I like. Said, uh, do you support Sunderland champion you're in? Oh, well, that's all right then. So oh, well, probably... I not support Sunderland, so I think that, that was what tricked us. They probably didn't understand you anyway because they're from Middlesbrough, so that's how it is. So, well, this is true. Right, we're going to talk about your footballing career then. So when you first started out, uh, where did you draw your inspiration from as a player? Um, I think, obviously, I had an older brother at the time. Um, and obviously, we lived um, beside a school field. And we had a field and he became a goalkeeper. Um, so it was very common that we would, you know, he wouldn't really have many friends to play with. So it seemed to be me that would get the, the nod to play with him. Um, I still to this day I'm not sure why I'm not a centre forward because he was a keeper so I would practice my shots at him or maybe that's why I wasn't a centre forward because I was that bad at the shots um, so then I decided to become uh, obviously a defender um, mm -hmm. so I would say probably just my family I think it was just something that uh, just sort of my mum's quite sporty herself um, and sport just sort of became a love in our family and I think when you were alright at it it's something that you just carried on doing didn't you so mm -hmm. that's probably where it all come from Oh, sounds good. So, was there a player that you admired when you were younger as well that you'd like try and, you know, I'd say you're having a kick around with your brother? Yeah. I remember as a kid myself, you know, I'd pretend, I'd pretend to be like Gabby Adini when I played in the field. And so, um, I mean, I wouldn't say I was like, it, would try to emulate them when you were. I, mean, I don't think I um, tried to emulate him in terms of um, celebrating like him or doing anything like him. Um, but I sort of <laughs> had a little fascination for Rio Ferdinand. Um, All right. So I sort of used to try and play like how I thought Rio Ferdinand played um, by doing things like reading his book to see what he did and everything. Um, so I wouldn't say I, you know, sort of like did as everything he did, but it was somebody that I always thought was decent. So I tried to play like him, I suppose. Excellent. That's cool. Yeah. So we've got a diff different format here. So we're going to, for those uh, uh, listeners at home as well, uh, <laughs> I've already got people comments coming from Paul Williams mentioning that I was actually smaller than Gabby Dini. Thanks, Paulie. Um, <laughs> it's great Can being vertically challenged. Um, what? Paul, um, that actually the two thousand, the two hundred uh, games that I've played, the stats mm -hmm. only started in two thousand and ten. So any years before then, actually, I haven't accounted for because the oh, no. count women's stats to a certain degree. So <laughs> technically, I'm going to say that I'm probably above him, but that's all right. <laughs> well, I will say this. I, it's, uh, it was very, I always like to do research, obviously a lot of research on, yeah. on, on people who we're interviewing. And um, I actually had this conversation with Ellie the other day that it, it's actually very difficult to pull statistical information on female players, which is, I know it's obviously changed. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, you know, when I, when I found out it was 211, was, again, it was... It was through an interview that you'd had previously that I found yeah. that out. So I didn't know that you didn't have. So you had more stats, and that's so it's going to elevate even further up the ranks. So how many how many games do you think you played then? Uh, so I believe I'm on currently. Um, obviously, did research on myself. I'm on 211. Um, I played 211 games. So I'm going to say I probably maxed out the 350, maybe. Maybe. What? Uh, I was dead wood by the end. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hang, hang, on <laughs> hang on a second then let me just check to see uh, where that would put you then because uh appearances at 350. Uh, I only found this out quite recently if obviously because um one of the current players Kira obviously exceeded 200 um and they yeah. asked if anybody else did and obviously I was mentioned above her um and then, and then Good they Lord. said that actually the they only start from a certain date point so so yes. Well, if if you if, well, I'm not saying if I mean so you, you've got three fifty. That actually ties you for the seventeenth most in club history. I mean, I, I wouldn't that? like to definitely say three fifty. I mean, I'm probably being a bit ambitious here, but <laughs> it sounds good though. I it like that. Sound really good, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. So you tie for seventeenth at all time appearance. I mean, who's going to fact check? That's, well, who knows? I mean, again, it is what it is. So. Well, you can't uh, find it anyway. So don't worry about <laughs> Nobody's carrying around the stats book for you, are they? Exactly. I, I believe you, Steph. How about that? That's, right, that should wanna... be good enough. Yeah, me too, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then, Ellie, what you got for her? Well, I want to talk about your debut because, yeah. I mean, you made it, uh, obviously, at the age of 16 on the yeah. 14th of August 2005. Um, I was seven years old at the time, so I don't remember it. Um, <laughs> and you faced Donnie Bells. 
<laughs> just had to throw that one in there. Sorry for that made you feel that. Obviously. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, you won that game 3-1. Um, yeah, what do you remember? Anything? Not much, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I, knew I was still very young and it was all, all a bit of a blur. Um, but I think it was one of them where, you know, you've, I'd waited for so long for it because back then um, in the women's game, you couldn't play for the senior first team until you were a certain age. Um, so you had to wait till you turned that age before you could actually then play. So I'd been in and amongst it a little bit. Um, and then obviously, but you couldn't then make the, the step up. Um, so I think when I finally did make the step up to the first team, it was it was like something that I'd wanted for a while because I was in and around it and I, I could see exactly what I wanted to do and where I wanted mm. to go. Um, in regards to playing the game, um, it was just, I think, uh, being in the North East, Sunderland Doncaster was always quite a big rivalry in women's football because um, they were both quite close to each other. You know, we didn't have to travel very far. So I think that probably gave it that little bit more spice for me. Um, but like I said, I don't really remember too much about it, other than the fact that we won, so it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> so it ended well, that was all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Started well and ended well, some would say. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Um, so how did that differ from when you actually made your debut as team captain then, a couple of years later? Oh, um, probably really different. Um, I think when you you make a debut as a, as a player, um, you're very much focused on yourself. And it's what you need to do as an individual and make sure you don't mess up as an individual and think about your role and how you can contribute to the team and how you can best play as an individual. Um, but I think when I became captain, uh, the debut of that became a whole different ball game. It was then actually I didn't just have myself to worry about. I had another 15 girls that I actually felt like I was, you know, the role model for and in charge of and had to sort of step up to. Um, so it was, it was very, very different. Uh, there was a lot of, more pressure, I would say, on my shoulders being captain in the debut. Um, and I suppose you you don't want to get it wrong at any time in your career. But I think starting off so young, I, I, I was probably a bit more fearless um, because I was so young and I, we'd just been relegated um, and it was a whole new setup. So although I felt the pressure in terms of looking after everybody, I, as an individual at the time, it was a bit, uh, just go and give it your best shot. Nobody, Everybody had written us off, so it was all right. Superb. So um, during the 14 years you were with the club, you've obviously experienced some highs and lows. Uh, over those seasons, you lined up alongside some quality players. Yeah. And I always say this, including them, but not limited to. So yeah, we're alongside like Lucy Braun, Steph Houghton, MBE. So you have to put that in the end, MBE now. Yeah, uh, right. Beth Mead, uh, Kira Ramshaw, Jill Scott, Carly Telford. Uh, who was the best Sunderland player that you played alongside and why? Oh, um, so I'm going to say the best one in my opinion, um, was by far Jordan Nobbs. Mm -hmm. He was unbelievable. Like, it was frightening some of the things. And I think at the time, um, she was still only very young. She was still only starting her, her career out. And obviously, she's gone on to much bigger and better things than what I could have ever wished for for her. Um, but I think she was just, she was like the engine room. If, if you ever had the ball and you didn't know what to do, she would just scream at you and just give, give me the ball, I'll do it for you. Uh, mm -hmm. She just made Sunderland ladies tick for so long when she was there. She was, honestly, she created things out of nothing. She absolutely was phenomenal for us. Um, and likewise, she's gone on to, you know, like I said, bigger and better things. But She's at, she's at think, Arsenal now, isn't she? Yeah, she's at Arsenal, yeah. yeah. Um, like I said, she went from Sunderland straight to Arsenal. Mm -hmm. um, like, she was just, honestly, she was one of the best players that you just sort of knew that if she was in front of you, you, you were all right, because she would just do the running for you, she would do the work for you, she would win the ball, she'd want the ball. She took, took a bit of pressure off you. I mean, don't mm -hmm. get it wrong, Lucy Bronze is probably, in my opinion, one of the best in the world at the minute, mm -hmm. um, women's football-wise, and she was also fantastic to play with as well. Mm -hmm. um, but she sort of uh, flourished in a different light to Jordan. I would say jo she was very much a, uh, an individual who had strived to do our best, whereas Jordan was just phenomenal across the board but That's both excellent. of them are very good who, who was your favorite uh central uh defensive partner while you were there because you've had a few uh yeah in a few, 14 uh, years. believe it or not i actually started off playing right back oh lord um, yeah i know it was a fun times there um, what with your pace and that <laughs> yeah obviously i'm like because right you're really back. fast yeah yeah i mean i just played right wing one game and thought, oh, I, can't I can't do this get me back there please Gaffa. i'm not doing this no more um uh, Gemma Wilson, I would say, by far. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it was very much like I said to you before about Rio Ferdinand. Yeah. Um, in my head as a child, it was very much Rio Ferdinand and John Terry. Um, yeah. I would say she was the John Terry and I was probably the Rio Ferdinand. She was the, the tough tackler, whereas I was like, oh, just give me the ball, please, and I will play. Um, <laughs> so I think we complemented each other very well. <laughs> Gemma Wilson, then. Brilliant. Yeah. All right, I think um, so so did we miss any uh yeah it is me <laughs> did we miss any out there was uh there, there are any other notable players that we uh that you played alongside that we missed out and uh, who was the best yeah, you and missed, why um you did you missed a couple out actually um so i would say uh demi stokes okay uh so she currently plays at man city but uh she actually went to america for university um and played out in america um the reason I would say Demi was probably so far above everybody else was at such a young age, um, she was very driven in terms of the strength and conditioning, the nutrition, everything. She was the all-round sort of like, if anybody ever ever wanted any advice, it would be from Demi because she sort of trained so well and did everything what I would say is correct um, or as the professionals would do it. Um, back in the day, whereas we just sort of would rock up to training and that'd be it. She would be there like an hour, <laughs> yeah. sprint runs and doing the, yeah. doing everything right. Um, I would say probably the most the most underrated player I've played with um, is Rachel Furness. Uh, mm-hmm. She obviously played for Sunderland for a long time. Uh, she plays yeah. plays for Northern Ireland um, now at Liverpool. Uh, I would say she's probably one of the most underrated players. So I would say them two are probably the two notably ones that you I thought you might have added in there. <laughs> well, we we'll have to leave some open for some discussion. Well, there, yeah, right? exactly. I don't put everybody on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could we probably mention... name a couple more, but they were the they're yeah, the standout I... ones that have obviously they... gone on to be pros and what have you. So I did a, um, when I was compiling the video for this week. I, what one thing that really impressed me? I, I hadn't realised how good that. Beth Mead had become before she left the club as well. That was the other thing. So I'll bring her up. You don't have to. I'll do that. Um, yeah, I don't. I, don't, I mean, I don't know if she's listening, but if she is listening, I don't really want to make a head any bigger than. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, man. Well, you've done it now. You've like it she, now. she's like the female version of Kevin Phillips. I think I've, I, I watched like the goals and stuff because I was I was compiling the uh, yeah, like yeah. A, a highlight reel, and I was very very impressed with uh, what she was doing. Obviously, I've seen her play for England as well, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, brilliant. It's funny, uh, she she obviously was at Teesside as like a centre of excellence as a child, as a young child. And I remember mm-hmm. it very well. She came to the Academy of Light and I was injured. Um, and Mick, our manager at the time, had said, I want her. I want her, Steph. We need to get her in. Right, OK. <laughs> so anyway, I was injured walking around. And she was like having a look around and sort of seeing what was going on. And I remember her dad was there and he was like sat in the dugout. And he was like, oh, I don't think she's going to come to this club. And I was like, are you crazy? I was like, what club wouldn't she, why wouldn't she want to come here? Like, what, why wouldn't she want to better herself? Mm-hmm. Um, and it was all, she was very, believe it or not, very um, low in confidence and didn't think she'd okay. ever be able to make that step up and, wow. um, and didn't think she'd be able to cut it at this edge. And mm-hmm. she's never played in a ladies team and, and blah, 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 blah. There was lots of other reasons. And I remember saying to her dad uh, that he was going to, if he didn't make a sign, then he was going to like let her down massively and it would be the best thing <laughs> he'd ever done. And, and anyway, lo and behold, I remember Nick said to me, Did she, is she going to sign? And I was like, I think I've done it. I think we've done it. I think I've <laughs> so it's your fault. It um, Brilliant. So yeah, she's really good to watch. Thank. We've well, yeah, thank I mean, thoughts. she was my roommate the full time I was there. Um, Brilliant. So she became like, I would probably say like a little younger sister. Um, <laughs> and don't get me wrong, whenever she did, you know, obviously she got loads of headlines. She was the star yeah. of the team, you know. She was, it was as it sort of, as I would say, Sunderland, ladies team became a lot more popular and a lot more in the headlines she was very much the amongst it she was mm-hmm. the golden girl as many would say um, mm-hmm. but don't worry i definitely brought her down a peg or two when i needed to and i think <laughs> it sounds daft but i think sometimes <laughs> she, she needed it yeah uh, and I think <laughs> it's worked out all right for her like it's worked out all right for her yeah right, she's so. done uh, she's done pretty well <laughs> she has I mean, like I think she obviously she obviously had quite a few options obviously at mm-hmm. the time she didn't obviously she was a very home girl so she didn't really ever go anywhere she didn't really ever go any so for her to go to arsenal was quite a big big thing i think um mm-hmm. but i think because jordan Nobbs had gone from sunland to arsenal and mm-hmm. we've seen how well jordan was looked after at arsenal 
Um, I think that obviously, you know, was a great stepping stone for Beth to see how how well I think, and I'm not crediting Arsenal ladies here, but Arsenal ladies do look after women's footballers. Uh-huh. Um, and I think she knew that. And I think that's probably what's allowed her to then obviously go even to, further to the next level. And fair play to her. I mean, she was a, she was a crack on player. And if we helped her <laughs> in any way, shape or form to get where she needs to be, then we're all right with that. That's pretty absolutely. I've got some questions coming in online as well. Actually, wants <laughs> yeah. to do with uh, the uh, the US national team stuff. We'll talk about that in a second. I think with yeah. regards to the uh, the pay debate, but uh, we'll we'll go we'll into that in a second. We've got uh, like, well, the lad's called George Sunderland. Uh, he's our uh, rep up in Baltimore. Yeah. It's a class classic name that he's put on there. Do many women try to get um, college scholarships in the states? Also, is the US and US women's national team? Yeah, oh, sorry. I was also in the US. Oh, yeah. The women's national team even outdraws the men, sometimes thanks to the superb marketing, uh, directing our teen girls who have a massive purchasing power. Why hasn't such a strategy been effectively employed in the UK or Europe, in your opinion? So, first, I think the first question is basically, are lasses trying to come across to the States? Now, I know I can say that because Ellie obviously is one of those lasses that's across in the States playing uh-huh. uh, for. Uh, West Virginia Tech. So, but uh, do you see that, yeah. uh, Steph? That that's the trying to get over here. Um, I think. I mean, obviously, I can. My one of my best friends. Uh, her his daughter's currently um in the process of going to America. Um, so I do think it's still quite popular. Um, I think it's a very popular for younger girls. Um, who maybe want to try and you know branch out a little bit and experience what I would call mm-hmm. life experience. Um, so I definitely mm-hmm. think that it is very popular. I think one of the the biggest barriers to girls going to US is the fact that um, lack of contact and lack of people over there that anybody knows. Mm-hmm. Um, and sort of you have to like um, know somebody to be able to get into a college or a university. It's not as straightforward as just sort of playing football. Um, yeah. But I think that is definitely one of the barriers. But like I said, I mean, Lucy Bronze went over there, Demi Stokes went over there. And I think it's just making that that plunge of doing it and making sure that you pick the right mm-hmm. one and the right place and what have you. But yeah, I definitely think it's it's becoming a lot more popular again. Not what, not that I want to give Borley any extra work and I'll put uh, Borley certainly has his contacts over here because I know he sends a lot of the uh, young lads, uh, yeah, you know, especially does, the ones. Yeah. So I'll tell Borley, you. <laughs> Borley won't be watching because he says he doesn't do Facebook and not like that. So, um, but uh, yeah, well, you mention it to him next time you see him. So he needs to get on that with the lasses team yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I'll tell him he owes me a cup of coffee anyway. I paid for the last one, so it's his. <laughs> oh, there you are. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, he'll not get you back though either. So no, don't no, don't he think you. Know. Does. It's always my round. Always. So, Every time we meet for a coffee, Steph, is it not your round? I paid for the <laughs> Joke me, aren't you? Every time. Aye, you're right. So I'm going to ask you a question about the. We'll come back to the other stuff again about the US stuff, but I want to ask you a question about the. Um, when the league was reformatted in 2011. So when they introduced the Super League, obviously uh, Sunderland have had um, the ladies themselves actually made two failed bids to join. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I think one was uh, 2011 the first time around and yeah. obviously just one most recently. What were your thoughts on this? And do you think that the club, as in Sunderland AFC, uh, supported uh, the bids sufficiently? Um, obviously, the first one uh, in 2011 when that was rejected at... Uh, I'll be honest, that was absolutely heartbreaking. Um, it was devastating. And I think one of the biggest reasons it was so devastating is because we didn't see it coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we'd we'd been playing really well on the pitch. We'd been doing everything really well. Um, and we were actually replaced by Man City, who at the time were in the league below us. Mm-hmm. Um, and the sole, sole reason was financial. Um, you know, as a club, we didn't meet enough criteria um, to be able to warrant or afford being in that league and I think Mm -hmm. you say there did the club do enough Um, my my honest answer to that is obviously I don't think somewhere along the line we fell short Mm -hmm. um, because we didn't get in is the bottom line because we didn't get in something went wrong in my opinion Um, Mm -hmm. whether or not that was money whether or not it was the marketing whether or not it was uh, the fact of we didn't really have a ground or whatever reason you know, we were given um, mm-hmm. as a club, as a women's team, a men's team, as a Sunderland, um, something fell short because we didn't mm-hmm. make it. Um, and th- that's the bottom line. Now, I remember it very, very well. We were called to Gateshead uh, College at the time because that's where we trained. Mm-hmm. And we were sent into a room and our manager just said, look, I've, I've got the news. Well, and that was it. He said, yeah. in. And obviously at the time, 
we had Jordan Nobbs, we had Lucy Bronze, we had Demi, we yeah. had loads of young talent who ultimately left us yeah. um, and left Sunderland. And I, and I genuinely believe that Sunderland Football Club now would be in a very, very different position had in two, all them years ago in 2011, had we have kept them players. Mm-hmm. I think it would have been a totally different ball game because I think we'd have we'd have done all right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you had people who wanted to play, who wanted to play for Sunderland, wanted to play football. Um, but because of that reason, they also wanted to play in the top flight of the women's game. Yeah, um, and that makes sense. Because Sunderland weren't in the top flight, um, they had to m- move on, and their their careers weren't up in the northeast. And unlike mine, you know, my my home was the northeast, and I wasn't ready to move. And mm-hmm. uh, it's just one of them things. But like I said, I, I don't blame Sunderland for it. Um, mm-hmm. I just think somewhere along the line we went wrong. Yeah, I okay, get yeah. yeah. Which is sad, very sad. Um, I mean, it, it is. If you think of the players that you just mentioned before, there. I mean, we've been talking about them, but there's some of the ladies have consistently mm-hmm. churned out these top quality international level players. Um, is, is that down to scouting, or is it just down to um, you know the, the coaching that's deployed, or is it a combination? Um, I mean, I think we've been very, very lucky in the the pool of players that obviously you've listed today and what have you. You know, the pool that you've listed off is. It's phenomenal, and I mean, if you could get them all back and make a make a start eleven, it would be outstanding. Um, is it the? Pro- I think, you know, it was at the time Sunderland was the main club in the northeast, and if you if you were half decent or you were, you know, you wanted to excel, it was Sunderland was the, the place to sort of be, and it was going places and it was doing things, and and it just seemed to fit for loads of people. And like I said, it was it's obviously been over a t- period of time and um, that people have come and go and, and what have you, but I think mm-hmm. you. When you get there and you're playing and you're enjoying it, it's 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 just fantastic and it's a great place to be and it's honestly it was really good. But I think we missed a trick, like you said there in 2011. I mean, I hate to say it, but I feel that FA did hinder us. Mm-hmm. Um, they one stopped the map of the the UK um, at Leeds. Uh, I think nobody really realizes that um, there is other places above Manchester that's in the north. <laughs> Um, and, and unfortunately, little Sunland wasn't wasn't up there. I'm afraid. Yeah. I think that hinders us in, in hinders us in other areas as well. Unfortunately, so. Well, yeah, I believe that as well. Yeah, mm. Ellie. Yeah, well, speaking of hindering, obviously, <laughs> COVID nineteen has been the big <laughs> spanner in all the works this year, this summer uh, specifically, and obviously, uh, it suspended all of the training, all of the playing, and then ultimately cancelled um, the Women's League altogether, whilst obviously the Lady Black Cats were 11 points clear um, of the National League North. Um, and they were obviously also preparing for the FA Cup final. Um, yeah. How would you have liked to see that play out? I think I think my biggest frustration with it all, obviously nobody can help the situation that way. Um, you know, that's just one of them situations. It's happened. My biggest frustration is that uh, Aston Villa in the Women's Super League 2 have been granted promotion to Super League 1. So if they're going to do it in one league, mm-hmm. why haven't they done it in yeah. the lower leagues? Yeah. If they had a turn yeah. around and said, uh, look, um, COVID-19, sort of, you know, the season's finished across the board, fine, no problem with that. I don't think Sunderland have a leg to stand on because in my opinion, safety is the most important yeah. at this moment in time and the number of deaths that have been happening is is unbelievable, and I just yeah. think football doesn't yeah. need to be going ahead. And my and that's my total opinion on it. But I think the FA have messed it up and frustrated people from Sunderland yet again because it's one rule for some people and a different rule for others. Now I said, like I said, if they had a branched it across the board, I mean Sunderland, who are in what you call the third tier of the women's pyramid. Um, are 11 points clear, I believe. Yeah. Um, Aston Villa, yes, they were, yeah. points clear, but yet, yeah, yeah, they got to go up. So, why is it that because Aston Villa are less points clear, they get to go up, but poor Sunderland, yet again, mm-hmm. um, are 11 points clear and you stay where you are? Mm-hmm. And then they've now come out and said, but don't worry, all your stats still count. All right, well, that's <laughs> great. Thanks very much for that one. <laughs> So yeah, they count, but you have to stay where you are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, I just find it unbelievable that I, I can't understand the, the justification behind it. I really can't. Um, I don't understand. Maybe they how got Jordan working for the FA. 
Well, I, do. <laughs> I just feel like every time it is, it's always Sunderland that seem to like miss out. Always. Yeah. And don't get us wrong, I'm sure there's other clubs that will feel hard done by, you know. Um, mm-hmm. It just seems that when you support Sunderland, it's like, oh my God, why are they coming to get us again? Like, why us again? <laughs> um, but the so, same happened with the men's team as well, didn't it? I mean, you think about how that's all panned out for them and yeah, their, their position and it's... Uh, I better not get poorly started because I get him on his high horse about that. He'll be just firing stuff left, right, and centre. So, um, all right, we're gonna go back to you now. Um, it's right, though, isn't it? Really? Oh no, it, 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 it is right. It is right. And unfortunately, no, it's... it's the hand we've been dealt. It, it, we've just got to unfortunately suck it up and get on with it. Because oh yeah, I mean you can't change it, but you can nah. still be frustrated at it. Yeah, I think I think that's definitely the case. So anyway, yeah. so back to you. All right. Yeah. FA Cup final, three consecutive National Premier League titles, promotion to the FA Women's Super League One. FA Women's Premier League Cup, Women's Player of the Year. What was your most memorable moment as a Sunderland player? Oh, a good moment <laughs> or a bad moment, are we talking? No, I'm going to get the bad moment shortly, but oh, right. the, yeah, the good, good moment, moment, yeah. Uh, oh, it's got to be beating, uh, beating Chelsea at the Stadium of Lives. Yeah. 100%. Uh, in, the, in the semi-final of the FA Cup? Yeah. Uh, 22nd of March was my birthday. It was Mother's Day. Um, total underdogs. They thought they were just going to turn up and roll us over, like most teams did in about mm-hmm. 10 years before that. Uh, and honestly, we absolutely battered them. Uh, <laughs> by far, like, we couldn't believe it. It was, like, surreal. I mean, one mm-hmm. goal would go in and then we were like, oh, my God, like, we're winning. And then another one went in and we're like, oh, my God, what's happening? <laughs> like, why are we doing this? Uh, yeah, has to be the best moment. I mean, getting, <laughs> getting to an FA Cup final was phenomenal. I mean, the mm-hmm. journey, we were totally, like, Everybody had written Sunderland off. Nobody gave away a chance. Um, to play at the Stadium of Light as well, I mean, it's just one of them things. On your birthday at the Stadium of Light, on Mother's Day, honestly, I couldn't have asked for anything better. It's probably one of the most things that I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, didn't you beat Chelsea twice? Uh, yeah, we did. Was that the same season? Uh, no, it yeah. wasn't in the same season. It was a couple of years later, season. yeah. Um, all right. Beth Mead scored a hat again that one after crashing her car. Yeah, that was in the same <laughs> game as well. <laughs> she wasn't playing in a car, was she? She wasn't, no, she, uh, she lives in the middle of nowhere, believe it or not, what her mum and dad do, she didn't, and she was driving and she, I think she fell down a ditch or something. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, but she's got a hat trick, so it was all right. Yeah, must have been all right then. Yeah, she comes out of the car and scores a hat trick later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it was worth it then. The Just, uh, are you playing, are you playing, are you okay? Right, get back on then. <laughs> Is there anything you want to share about? On? So, yeah. <laughs> It's well, no. Um, <laughs> Pride, Pride, Pride Park, obviously yeah. the home of uh, Derby County. They, you had the cup final there, obviously against Arsenal. So, is there anything, the you know, any experiences that you had that day? That you, I mean, obviously a proud moment for you leading the team out as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was yeah? You know, every time we have someone here who's played in the cup final, I always ask, what was that experience like? I think there was like twenty three thousand people there or something. Uh, I mean, so this the stadium yeah, must yeah, have been was, fairly full. Uh, yeah, what was it, was it like then? It was. It was a bit weird to be honest, in the sense of. Uh, obviously we never really played in front of big crowds like that back in back in our day you know it was very much like just your family and your friends and I think when you played in front of 20 odd thousand it was I couldn't even hear the person next to us <laughs> so they'd be shouting at you to like mark somebody or do something and actually you didn't have a you couldn't have a clue what they were saying to you um, I remember at the time the goalie was shouting at me and shouting at me and I'm going I can't see what, you, what you're saying I don't know what you're saying is that your excuse? Yeah, absolutely. That's it is. why when, I got beat, because I couldn't hear When it. Yankee ran past you, is that your excuse? <laughs> you couldn't hear <laughs> I couldn't have bothered, I didn't mind uh, hear her. Uh, yeah, it was, it was such a surreal day. I mean, obviously, I know, I know we lost. Uh, but I think it was one of them where, I won't lie, it was, you know, let's let's make sure we don't disgrace ourselves here. Mm-hmm. Um, we were a league below Arsenal at the time. Mm-hmm. So it's like a championship club playing a premiership club. And it was like, right, okay. Let's just go and give a good account of ourselves and let's enjoy it and, you know, take on board that actually we've, we've done all right to get here. Like, we deserve to be here. That was one of the things that our manager kept saying to us at the time. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you're not just here for the day out. You're here mm-hmm. to actually, like, compete. Um, you deserve to be here because we obviously just beat Chelsea. I don't know if you know in the semi-final. <laughs> um, you're here to compete and you're here to, like, do well for yourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did. Uh, obviously, it was, it was phenomenal. I mean, just daft things like the... The hospitality at the end, like you got free food and that, like it was so like, oh god, this is amazing. <laughs> Just really what happens when you get a finals? FA Cup final, uh, free food, yeah, like. yeah, absolutely. It was like it was just. 
I think just playing there with like people as well that had like had done the journey with us. So mm-hmm. we'd all been on a journey that you know we didn't get paid for playing at that time. We didn't we didn't care for much. We just would train and play and do our best. And it was like we called ourselves the flying horse on many occasions um, because we believed that you know we paid subs at the time to play. Like we paid Sunland to play. Um, and we just would rock up to training and it was such a laugh and I think it was probably team spirit that got us there because Mm -hmm. everybody just wanted to graft for each other and it was just, it was honestly, it's something that I'll never ever forget. I mean, I've never watched the game back and I never ever will because my memory of it was that we did all right. But actually, if I was to watch it back, it might not be as all right. Yeah, don't watch it back. (laughs) Yeah, I will I know we just back. watch the last minute. Just watch the last minute. That's all you need to do. Yeah. When you yeah. score, when, we, when, they get, when it's 2-1. That was... Yeah, uh... score, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> but honestly, that, some of their players they had playing, I mean, phew, it was like... It was chalk and cheese to us. <laughs> Bear in mind, we had a girl got sent off in the sem- uh, in one of the other rounds, so we actually had to rejig our team all over uh-huh. at the time. So, like, we had our left-backs in playing centre-back. Um, so, we are a bit all over the place at the time, but not that mm-hmm. that's an excuse, because... At the end of the day, they were the better side. They passed the ball. We pa- they passed us off the park, do you know what I mean? But but we tried hard. <laughs> of course, of course you did. I've got a couple of comments here as well. John Campbell yeah. says to say, uh, he said he hopes you well. I don't know. You must know oh, who John yeah. Campbell is, I'm assuming. Uh, George, is, Hi, <laughs> George is asking another question here. He's saying, not not to bash the men, but it seems because there's... Uh, oh, God, I'm, I'm, my... oh. Glasses. Oh, yeah, not to the men, but it's because there's uh, not the money in the women's game. You guys play with more passion and actually have more love for the game. Have you sensed that? that you know, the guys kind of just. I, will, I can tell you. I'll, I'll tell you something offline later. But uh, um, is it? Is, do you think the the lasses play with more passion and pride because of the fact that there's less uh, hassles about money. money and all that kind of stuff? Or because um, I mean, as you said before, you're rocking up yeah. to training and you're paying these subs to play. I mean, it's like. I think it's I would a, agree with him. I definitely yeah. think that, I think it was, um, I don't mean this disrespectful, but in the men's game, everything's there for you. Mm-hmm. You know, that thing's like, um, when you go in, in the changing room at half time, there was Lucas Aids there, there, there was water there. That was all put out for the men. We didn't really have any of that. Don't get me wrong, it got better um, and it got more developing. Um, but at the time, it was very much like, you know, you, you bring your own water, you bring your own Lucas Aids. You, you have your own boots that you go and buy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you you are you and you look after yourself sort of thing. Um, and I think it was one of them where, because it was just everybody was the same, you know, you didn't know, nobody was on any money. Everybody was a much of a much. And it was like, right, let's go and try and do it. And I think it's probably, it, it's definitely made it more passionable and more enjoyable because I think the minute you throw money in, it just all goes to pot. It really does. No. Um, that's, that's, that's fair. Yeah. I mean, I understand why money's being brought in, don't get me wrong. Um, but then it's like, well, you know, such and such is on 30 grand or 40 grand or whatever they're on. So do you have to play them then? Yeah. Uh, do you have to play this person because they're on so much money? And, and for a women's team like us at Sunderland, we didn't generate much money. Uh, so everything that we got was, you know, we were very expensive to the club. Um, yeah. So it was like, do they play the ones that have got the money and, and what have you? And actually, then they didn't just become playing the best team. It became about money. And, and you know, when I was there, and especially at the start, it was a, you played for Sunderland because you wanted to play for Sunderland. Whereas as it went on, it sort of you played Sunderland because Sunderland were in the top league. Yeah. Um, as opposed to you play for Sunderland. Whereas yeah. I played for Sunderland because I wanted to play for Sunderland. And that's all I ever knew and all I ever wanted to do. Whereas some people sort of, when when Sunderland became in the top league, it became actually, well, should we go and buy this player and buy this player and buy this player? And, and that's when they sort of lost it a little bit, in my opinion. Yeah. It's but, always interesting to hear you say that because, uh, or just about your Sunderland piece as well, because uh, yeah. I know we've been talking about uh, some other uh, stuff with this supporters branch. But obviously you're Whitley Bay, lass. Oh, yeah, born and yeah. bred so and again there's well there are quite a few magnums up there i'm surprised but it's just interesting to hear how and not what i've been reading as well how dedicated and committed you are to someone that's uh very impressive so i appreciate that i know we all yeah. do so yeah I am um yeah uh, whitley bay my brother actually place. plays for whitley bay as well now oh really he might be listening here so i might have been <laughs> good but i don't know if he is, is, he, yeah. is he any good? <laughs> he's a goalkeeper yeah he's good he's decent yes he who's he's better good. you or him I know he's probably better than you in goal than you, probably, uh, obviously. 
Yeah, I'm definitely better than him. Excellent, good answer. Yeah. But <laughs> if, if I know that earlier, that would have been part of it because we asked Gary Bennett whether his brother Dave was better than him or not. So, you know, we've gone down this track. So it's, this is not, right. I'm not just picking on you. It's, it's a common right. theme here. Uh, he, he will probably say he is better. All ah, right. Um, he's better in goal. Um, yeah. He does actually play outfield for a Sunday team, or he tries. Um, <laughs> but he likes to think he's a centre forward, but honestly, he just needs to stick to playing in goal. <laughs> fair enough. That's fair enough. <laughs> Speaking of goals. Right, I want to talk you about your goals, yeah. Um, so I remember seeing one um, against Bristol City where you smashed it from about three yards out. Um, I, I, and then I obviously like you managed a total of 12. I, I, is this I the goal? I can show you that goal. I'm going to show you it, yeah. Look at this. Oh, Here's another lined yeah, up. Yeah, go on, let's see it. This? You ready? Yeah, come on. Oh. I celebrate like I've won the World Cup as well. Yeah, I'm mean, a bit shaky, <laughs> this, but it should It's the best way right. to celebrate. Look at this there. Bye. Yeah, I always got told, all right. Uh, there you are. You've got to be in the right place at the right time. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> Don't you agree? Oh, yeah, I fully that believe was... that. Right place at right time. Yeah, that's a standard. She's saying that because she, she's goal, a striker. Right? See, that's, that's standard for yeah, 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 I'm a striker. My teammates hate that I'm all like right place, right time. But it's true. Yeah, absolutely. If, some, if I wasn't there, it wouldn't have went in, would it? Oh, you're right, like. Exactly. You're if you're not there, score. it can't go in the back of the net. Exactly. I mean, I'm surprised. <laughs> as long as you score. <laughs> Sorry, Ellie. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so I've seen that. Obviously, you managed 12 in total over your career. Um, yeah. And we mentioned Quite this in the intro. Bad, um, not for a centre half. It's good, that one. <laughs> it's good, I think. Mind, mind you, when you tell us that you played 400 games, 500 games, however many games you played for them, that's uh, normally joking. 350 games, 12. Yeah, maybe 12 your goals. appearances. <laughs> Would have been, it sounded better with so 200. about your first goal. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so your first goal against Newcastle. Yeah. Um, obviously, how did it feel to score your first first goal for the club against such a rival like Newcastle? And uh, yeah, can you can good. you remember yeah, enough to talk to it through it? Well? That I, I do think it was against Newcastle. I, I am pretty sure it was. Um, but that's what we just when I looked back to my my mum's um, notes that she has on my footballing career, my mum's folders that she keeps. That was the first time we could see the goal where a goal went in. Um, so we went with that one. Um, I think I actually scored two goals in this game as well, which was really surprising me as well. Uh, I think at the time it was Sunderland Newcastle. Obviously, you know the rivalry. I don't need to tell anybody the rivalry between Sunderland and Newcastle. It was massive and it was no different in the women's game. Um, if not, probably slightly. Uh, the good thing about the women's game is that actually you knew the, other, you, you knew the people from Newcastle personally. So you sort of knew them as well. So I think it probably made it even better. Um, but yeah, it was it was good. At, it's, it's Everybody loves to score a goal, don't they? I mean, <laughs> when I asked my husband, so how many goals Absolutely. do you think I scored? Um, he actually said, well, own goals are normal goals. And I was like, well, that's good. <laughs> I wanted the normal goal. Uh, normal goals in the game. That was, that was, he scored two own goals in the game. That? I can't remember what game that was. Do you remember? I said he scored two own goals in one game. I remember that. Oh. reading some stats about right. that. Yeah, that was after I'd already scored. Yeah, I scored two on goals against <laughs> Liverpool. Ah, oh, there you go. It's bad. <laughs> but yeah, goals are goals. I agree. I'm okay I agree. about that. Everybody else scored them. It was all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, so, do you have any other favourites? Like, out of, out of any of the other yeah. goals, aside from um, Newcastle? Yeah. I scored a free kick once. Um, that was quite a good goal. Uh, I can't remember who it was against, though, but I quite like taking free kicks. Um, and I do remember I scored a penalty once. Um, I don't know why I was even taking the penalty, to be honest, because it's just not something that I would have ever done. Um, but I think after I'd scored it, I was like, I'm never doing that again because the pressure on a penalty was phenomenal. I, couldn't oh, I love it. a penalty, me. I love I, it. Oh, you think you're so close to the goal that it's a no-brainer that you're going to score. And poor how wrong I was. Um, I did score it though, so I was all right. Um, but yeah, I wasn't really one for scoring goals. I, I won't like to say that, but I didn't really score many. And I I, I tried every now and again, but I, it wasn't one of my strengths. Hmm. Um, so let's talk um, 
we've talk, obviously talked about the positives. I want to touch briefly on the negative aspect of that. Um, okay. So what do you consider to be your worst moment at the club or, you know, it, it, performance or experience, whatever like that? Do you have one? Uh, uh, probably that game where I scored two home goals. I, I, was going through, <laughs> I was going through a period where um, nothing was going right. It seemed that no matter what I did on a football pitch, I just couldn't get it right. Um, and then we went and played. And I remember the manager played for the first 10 minutes. You know, don't let them in, blah, 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 blah. I think you just do. Anyway, the ball came in and I slid and put it in my own goal. And I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> I remember me, my husband's granda rang us at the end of the game saying that he'd seen Bannon had scored. Didn't realise that it was on the wrong side of the teletext, did he? It was actually on goal. Um, and then the following week, obviously, I, th I think it was Liverpool. Um, obviously, I'd already just previously scored one. And then, obviously, the next game, I'd scored two. Um, and I won't lie, I think I just wanted the ground to open up and swallow us. Uh, I think I just wanted somebody to come and hook me off the pitch. Um, but it was... It was it really hit home um, that it was really difficult at times because no matter how hard you tried, it just wasn't going for you. Um, and it didn't matter what I did or anything. And I just couldn't couldn't stop scoring on goals for some reason. Um, but it, it was horrible. It was Honestly, it was the worst moment ever. Um, but the team were great when it happened. They were all like, I mean, we'll laugh about it now. It wasn't really that funny at the time. And they definitely didn't think it was that funny at the time. Um, but it's fine now. But it was definitely the worst moment that I've ever had. Definitely. Good Lord. Probably understandable, really. <laughs> yeah, it's bad times in there when he scored two in one game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so let's talk about your dedication now. It's obviously been yeah. highlighted across the board by managers, coaches, everyone um, when you, when you, that you've played for. Um, why, why did you stay at Sunderland for so long? Um, good question. Uh, I think... I'm very much a home bird, I won't lie. Um, I used to get homesick. Um, I always didn't really ever stay out other than at my mum or dad's. It was very much, that's where I was. Um, and I think, I don't know, when you play for Sunderland, uh, it just, and you've supported Sunderland, and I, that was that was all I knew. I didn't know any different. I didn't know how it would be anywhere else. And quite frankly, I didn't want to be anywhere else. It was just, this is how my life was, and it's always how it's been, and, and I'll always be grateful for everything that I, I did at Sunderland, everything that I got from Sunderland. And hopefully I've, I've given back a little bit to the club at some point. Um, but I just think, I, like I said, I, I didn't know any different and I, I didn't want to know any different. I'm sure if you went to other clubs, it might have been ran differently. The trainer might have been better or whatever it was. But for me, I had a great, great group of friends and always just wanted to be with that group. And obviously when I retired and people went their separate ways and you know people moved on, it was... It was the right time for me to go as well because everybody that I'd so associated someone with wasn't there no more. Um, so I think it was the people got me there, the fans got me there. And I think it just just gets in your blood and I couldn't get rid of it. <laughs> Brilliant. Here you are then. This is a fun question for you then. Are you all right there? I would have to call the doctor. You haven't got COVID-19, have you? <laughs> no, I think I've got high temperature. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Probably got sunburn <laughs> off the, uh, the other day. Hey, it's been uh, out here. It's been hot. I heard that rumour. Uh, 35 or something the other day, wasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. <laughs> so here's a fun question for you. So current club manager Melanie Ray commented that it would be strange not seeing you in training after your retirement and described you as part of the furniture. So what piece so of Mel furniture Ray would you bring? Hey? <laughs> yeah, Mel 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 said that. The furniture. <laughs> part of the furniture. So I'm going to ask you, what piece of furniture would you be and why? Um, <laughs> Uh, well, I'm really well known for, believe it or not, um, my friends from work will tell you this, um, all through COVID, I've always had a nap every day. Um, so I'd probably say I would probably be the bed um, <laughs> because then I can just get into my bed and roll out to <laughs> training and then I'd be all right. Brilliant. Um, I was always Ellie, known for going to sleep early and waking up early, um, especially when I was teaching. I used to say to them, I was right boring. Don't come in my room and talk to me because um, I'm going to bed. Um, so I would definitely say I was the bed. Well, Ellie, I don't think you're getting away with it. What piece of furniture would you be? Stupid question, I know, but whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
Um, probably, I'm really lazy. I'll probably be a sofa. Sofa? Fair enough. I thought I've had yeah, long time. Because I like to watch a lot of TV. Uh, <laughs> okay. I've, I've had a long time to think about it. So I said I'll be a shears long, and my joke was going to be it would probably be a, sh a shears short because I'm only small oh. in height. So anyway, <laughs> right. <laughs> You've been so, thinking about that too long, you. All night I did again, and that's why I had, probably had to have a yeah. couple of beers. It was on the spotlight. It sounded better. <laughs> so, um, I think that's what type of fruit do you think you are? Uh, I would never do <laughs> what that. Biscuit? What biscuit would you be? Yeah. No. <laughs> I just thought, wait, wait. Uh, Kate, <laughs> Co Kate Coates said, call you the nap queen, apparently. Uh -huh. so, Kate Coates? Yes. Kate Coates uh, loves her Sunland top that I donated to her. There you go. Katie Coates lives in Middlesbrough. Um, oh. She claims she supports the borough. I mean, I've never seen her in a borough top yet. I've only ever seen her in a Sunland top to the point where her boyfriend refused to hang it up on the washing line the other day, she said, because <laughs> she wears it that often. She wears them more than what you wear your Sunland tops, I'm telling you. No way. No she way. Sunland tops. She does, honestly. She loves it. Does she have, she's from Middlesbrough. Does she have webbed fingers? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I've never looked <laughs> I've never looked that close to them. Okay. Um, oh, I know. Just listening. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, Graham commented that my I sh should really basically just shut up and said that was lame what I said. So all right, we'll get back to the questions and sorry about trying to be funny. <laughs> right, having made the furniture was rubbish. Yeah, furniture. Yeah. Uh, it was shit. I'm sorry. Right. So having made 211, which we've now decided is more like 350 career appearances for Summoned. You've obviously faced many players, including the likes of Yankee, uh, Karen Carney, Dowie, Oloku. Uh, can you tell us who was the best opposing player you faced? Kelly Smith. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't oh, know her off. Little, little Call it just, well, uh, yeah, Kelly Smith was what? I mean, don't get us wrong, she wasn't the fastest player, so it was okay. But I mean, mm -hmm. she just, her movement was phenomenal, and you just didn't know what she was going to do when she had the ball. And I was always taught. Um, don't look at the person's feet look at the ball when you're trying to tackle them well I couldn't even see the ball because she was moving it that fast mm -hmm. um, she was absolutely <laughs> out. unbelievable yeah Mo really really talented player very good Excellent. no brainer <laughs> Kelly Smith <laughs> so what about who did you dread facing the most um, as in like didn't want to ever play against um, yeah, so obviously I, mean. I didn't really like playing against Kelly Smith I won't lie mm -hmm. um, but I definitely didn't like playing against Gemma Davison um, so I think she's at she's Tottenham. got incredible skills oh she's like rapid uh, it was a pace she was electric she would hit the ball and she would just boom straight past you uh, it, like I said it was absolutely frightening how quick she was and I don't think any of us liked playing against her because we couldn't keep up with her yeah, she's at Spurs. <laughs> yeah, she's at Spurs. Yeah, I just yeah, I thought she was there. at Spurs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, excellent. Yeah, she's uh, she's rapid. Anybody with pace, we weren't very good at. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll move on to football grounds now, stadiums, um, both as a player and a supporter. Um, yeah. Worst and best grounds you've ever visited, and why? Um, as in like. Male stadiums, like where the males play. Well, anywhere, anywhere you anywhere. play. Okay, so yeah. well, I, I won't lie, I haven't really been to many. Um, I don't really follow that much. Um, but I did take my husband to, um, obviously when we got married as a wedding present, I took him to Old Trafford Hospitality. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, in the like the posh bit, uh, and that was like unbelievable. Uh, that was really decent. Um, and they t took us like a tour of the stadium, what have you, and give us like the spiel about everything about Old Trafford. And, mm -hmm. and considering I don't support Man United, I mean, he does, but I don't. Uh, but considering I don't support Man United, it was quite eye opening to see the stadium was pretty decent. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll probably say Old Trafford's the best one I've been to. Mm -hmm. um, the worst one? Um, <laughs> uh, I don't think I've ever really been to a bad one. I've obviously played on a lot of bad pitches, um, but they weren't really stadiums. Uh, when we played against, I think it was Bristol, we had to play on a like an it's an athletics track stadium, um, and I didn't really like them because the crowds were so far away mm -hmm. from the pitch because the athletics track was round the outside. 
Yeah. Um, so although it wasn't a bad stadium, it was bad to play at because you couldn't quite hear the enormous mm-hmm. crowds that we used to get. <laughs> enormous crowds. <laughs> So over your Sunderland career, you played for, correct me if I'm wrong, you played for Mick Mulhern and then it was Carlton Fairweather. Yeah. And then obviously Mel. And I think you were with Mel, were you with Mel at Gator College as well? I was with Mel at College. Yeah. yeah. Um, who's the best manager you've played under and why? Oh, of the three of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you've, got to, you've got to pick one. Can you tell me if any of them are listening in? <laughs> I can't see it. <laughs> Just, uh, you can't see all of them either. <laughs> so I'll, my, Oh, good question. So, obviously, all three. So, Mel was Mick's assistant for a long time. Mm-hmm. So, Mel and Mick sort of did it together for a long time. And, obviously, he was on his own for a long time. And um, Carlton was obviously, when it went, when Sunderland went full time, Mick left. Because Mick was a policeman at the same time. So, he left to, obviously, couldn't pursue both full time. And they wanted somebody full time. So, Carlton came in when it was full time. So, I didn't play as... Um, as long under Carlton is what I would say. Um, whereas I played obviously quite a long duration under Mick. Um, I would say sometimes we uh, got on very well and other times we didn't get on so well. Um, he was very honest in things, um, but I would be as equally honest back to him. Um, mm-hmm. So it's prob- it probably worked well um, in that sense. Uh, I respected them all, um, but I think probably because I played under Mick the longest, Mm-hmm. Um, it was probably all I really knew. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, obviously, I had Mel at college. Um, Mel's also, she's very funny. Um, she has a quirky little, like, phrases that she'll bring out every now and again with you um, and, like, tell you. Um, she, she's very driven. She knows uh, sort of what she wants. She's very well planned before every session. Mm-hmm. and She would know exactly what she was doing and where she wanted you to go. Um, mm-hmm. But I would say all three of them were very different. Uh, but like I said, I just probably played under Mick the longest, so it was probably all I really knew. Okay, that's fair enough then. So the the current Sunderland teams then. So of the, have you been out to watch uh, the ladies play this year? Oh, this uh, tw- a few times, a few times. Is it in the team for you who looks like you know? I know that obviously uh, your your captaincy was replaced as well. But is anyone in that team who you think that could potentially go on and, and make the next level? Yeah, I think obviously you've got, you know, you've got Kira and you've got Megan Beer and, and all the, the sort of experienced players, I would say, there. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as I am aware, there is a girl called Jess Brown, I think her name is. Um, she's quite young. I think she's in the England setup. I would say she's probably very much potential. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of young ones coming through who, if they stick at it, will do very well for themselves. Um, but probably standard Sunland will they'll, they'll, uh, do what Sunland do best and they'll take them so far and then they'll move on again. <laughs> so what about the men's team then? Is any uh when was last time you went to see the lads play? Um oh good question. Uh I went with Borley to a game once. Mm-hmm. Um watched a game there. I think we went last season. I think I took Scott's gra- Scott uh Grandad to one of the games last season. Um that was about it. So I don't really go that often to the men's, I won't lie. Um, <laughs> was it any- well, did you see anybody who like in the team who stood out or anything or anybody um, I do like Luke O'Nine. Yeah. He's my favourite. He is I tell you what, everybody we've talked to on here, um, doing all these tokens, everybody have come back and said that he he's he's the lad, like he's the he's yeah. the one that uh, if we can keep him at the club, obviously future yeah. future Absolutely. captain. Um he's just a cracking lad he's all around. Long, he's talented, he's yeah flexible, he's he's just he just seems a genuine nice lad. Hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Who wants to do the best for the club? I think. Yeah. Um, what's, your, what's your opinion? Go on. What's, what's, what's your opinion about the current state of the club? Being um, being Sunderland through and through. You yeah. know what, what's your opinion? So. Um, I think obviously it's it's not where we want it to be. Um, obviously we're not in the league that we want to be in. Um, and I think obviously financially it's probably not in a great position either. Um, I feel like we we let players go quite easily. Um, we don't try and hold on to the talent that we've got, the young talent either. Mm-hmm. Sort of like comes and goes. Um, I just think it needs to have a good investment to push to the next level. I mean, we've obviously just lost uh, the keeper to mm-hmm. Scotland and I think he'll be a massive miss. Mm-hmm. Um, and we seem to let players go, but they never actually really replace them with anything. Um, no, certainly no quality, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's very much like, mm-hmm. you know, we're letting a good one go and then we'll get like a half decent one in and actually it's, to get out this league, it's gonna—it's not as easy as what people seem to think. Yeah, 
Um, yep. but it's, it's very Clearly sad. Not. I, I, we're still in it. <laughs> well, yeah, this is very true. Uh, very sad state of affairs, I would say, at the minute. Um, I think we got to a place where the fans were a lot more on board, and I think, obviously, the fans are massive for the club. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they did sort of get the fans back on board. Um, and just unfortunate that the season fell short for them, I would say, this year. Yeah. Um, but it's just mm-hmm. one of them things. They just they were, they were losing stupid games, weren't they? And it wasn't good yeah. enough. Yeah. Uh, need a bit of a centre-forward who they can rely on as well. I mean, uh, I'm very you... surprised they've let Duncan Watmore go. Um, well, there's, like you said before, there's a few players who they've let go, which have just got us all puzzled. So, yeah, uh, and that investment, that, if you think about the money they spent on Will Gregg, and that would have, you know, Madger would have, it would have been better inv- invested in Madger, obviously. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. He, Einstein's a wonderful thing. I mean, again, he could have fell by the wayside, but he was having a brilliant first half of the season. He was superb. Yeah. So, it's disappointing. But, um, Sad, isn't it? Yeah. It's, 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 but you don't know the ins and outs. I mean, no. I haven't watched the Netflix series. Uh, but don't. I just can't bring myself to watch it because I don't want to know. I yeah, don't watch it. Uh, don't it's you got, so Graham was taking the piss out of me before about my shitty joke, but I will tell you a quick story about him. If you have a good opportunity to watch back, we've got something which is called uh, Beer Football Bollocks, and it's like oh. a little podcast kind of thing that we do as well. And then uh, <laughs> Graham uh, basically said he was into the third time watching that series when he realised that we were going to get relegated, but obviously it's the fourth time that he... Because he'd actually experienced the relegation, so he can sh- shut up as well. So I just thought I'd just say that up because I owe that one at least nothing else. So yeah. you are coughing pretty bad there. I think I'm getting a bit worried about you. Sorry, I think I should have probably had a bottle of water. I, f- I forgot that I was going to talk a lot. I didn't take into anticipation. Can you prepare. Oh well. Oh, I might want to put one thing hey, out before. Right. Well, let's talk about. Hang on, Ellie. Hang on. Hang on. Because I have to do this as well for those people that are watching at home. Uh, Ellie's wearing her dad's shirt. Uh, just so you know, um, yeah, and it's yeah, a yeah. The OG. It's retro from Roker Park. Do you want to show everybody the front of it? Because you've, you've got to show up, man. I think yeah, I had I something like that. that. It looks. It looks like even though Ant and Deck are Geordies, obviously, oh. it looks like something Ant and Deck would wear. That. That is really old saying. school. That. It is proper. Let's get ready I to rumble. I'm not bashing my t-shirt because I do love no. it. I, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> I, so, I mean, it's anyway. about seven sizes too big. She's probably got her son on top one as well. That's it. <laughs> she did, <laughs> like, but she did comment true. back saying she loved it. Did she? <laughs> she did. Yeah. She did. She does love right. it. <laughs> She'll love that I've spoke about her too. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let's talk about uh, after retirement then. Obviously, you went into full-time teaching. Um, yeah. Which do you prefer? Do you have a preference? Why do you prefer it if you do have a preference? Oh, what have a preference of teaching or football? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, good question. Uh, they're both very different, but very similar. Um, obviously, I'm a PE teacher, but a head of year at the same time. Um, I think teaching, uh, I'm there to try and change their lives. I'm there to try and enrich their lives. I'm there to try and make them better. Um, oh, thanks. <laughs> My husband just bought me a bottle of water. That's very nice of him. Must be watching the room. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say so. Yeah, teaching you that, inspire you that, enlighten you that, uh, you know, to enrich their lives, make them better, set them up for going on to bigger and better things. Um, not always about you. It's about the kids. Whereas in football, I would say it's very much, you know, you're there to, to perform and to play very well week in, week out. Um, I would say both jobs came with a lot of pressure and come with a lot of pressure. You know, you have to perform every day um, to meet those pressures. Um, I think I enjoy them both the same. I won't lie. Like I said to you before, the reason I retired is because I was doing them both rubbish, in my opinion. So I became a rubbish footballer. Obviously, I kept scoring on goals as well. And then I became a Um, I couldn't sort of like take the kids to fixtures I couldn't do any extra curricula because literally as the school day finished I had to get from Middlesbrough to Sunderland in a certain time frame and I don't know if anybody knows the UK that A19 is horrific um, and I just like I said I just I, I became bad at both of them <laughs> so I just decided that it was time for a change and I went to teaching Fair enough. I love it now I've been at the same school now for seven years so I must must be all right. Must quite like it there. <laughs> oh, that's Ellie Fawes. 
yeah. I mean, that's fair enough, isn't it? But, yeah. but uh, so back as a player then, um, other than obviously Sunderland, um, which club would you have really wanted to play for? Like, had you had any um, choice ever? If I had a choice, uh, at the time, obviously, um, don't get us wrong, everybody sort of like caught up a little bit now. Um, but at the time when I was in my peak, it was Arsenal. Uh, they won everything. Um, yeah. they, like I said earlier, you know, they looked after the players. They, they did everything what the men's team sort of did and it just replicated in the women's side. And I think if I wouldn't have ever moved, I won't lie. Um, I wouldn't have ever moved anywhere. But if I was to advise somebody, I would have advised Arsenal. But I wouldn't have moved. And I didn't, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what's the best advice you've ever been given then as a player or anything really um, so we used to have like um, daft things like these quotes used to go up in the changing room every now and again um, and what, two of them really stuck with me my brother loves one of them and he always stands by it um, the first one I would say is it was very much like if uh, hard work beats talent if talent doesn't work hard and I've always been brought up to always work hard. Doesn't matter how good you are, how bad you are at whatever it is. Um, always work hard. You know, academically, I wasn't the most gifted. Let's put it that way. Um, but I worked hard to to make sure that I did all right. And I think in football wise, you know, at the time, like I said, we were very much underdogs a lot of the time when I played. Um, and it was very much, you know, you're going to work hard, and that's a given. You don't have to be good at working hard. Um, and then the other one was. Um, was very tailored to the centre forwards was something like um, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take and I used to always try and put that into my perspective that I'll miss 100% of the opportunities or the chances that I never take so if I don't take the chance or the plunge I'll, I'll never know um, and I just feel like them are two things that have always sort of stuck with us and I've tried to live my life believing I would say especially now when I come away from football I definitely do try to look back to them Mm-hmm. So, well, what do you think? Good was, ones, like. Yeah, definitely. What, what do you think was your biggest accomplishment in sports? As in, like what I achieved? Is that yes. Um, yeah. I think as a kid, you always dream of of winning football leagues. That's what you dream of when you go into a football team. You, you dream of winning the league, um, and it became we won quite a few, so it was all right. <laughs> um, but we, you never really. You never really dream that you're going to get to an FA Cup final because there's so many teams out there. So mm-hmm. I think I would probably say getting to an FA Cup final, although we lost, um, mm-hmm. was probably the biggest achievement to date that I've ever made. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So I want to just, again, these are one of our silly questions that we always ask as well. Yeah. Have you have a, a favourite chant or a song that you've heard either <laughs> as a player on the field or you've been in the stands? Have you? Is it something that you've heard that uh, has resonated with you or something that's stuck with you through time? Um question um i mean niall quinn has his own song about the pants doesn't he yeah disco pants yeah, ah, that one, yeah. yeah i would say that was one of when i first went to a couple of sunland games that was one of the, the songs that i could hear mm-hmm. <coughs> excuse me um and i didn't really understand it at first um but i quite liked it so i think that would probably be the one that stuck with me the most <laughs> Um, I probably Brilliant. couldn't tell you the words to it, so I will not try and sing it. I'm not. I'm not going to start. Actually, it's funny you should say you mentioned about singing because my next question is: I read that as a younger player that you'd sing songs in the car with your dad on their way to practice. <laughs> <and back. laughs> Were there any favourite songs that you? <laughs> oh, good old Big Kev. Um, <laughs> yeah, so when I was a kid, we had obviously me and my brother used to train all the time, so I trained in Sunderland, whereas he didn't. So from us, from Whitley Bay to Sunland was a was a trek sometimes. And I mean, my dad had like a, a company van. Uh, used to work for an, he's an electrician and worked for the van. And I don't know why it was my dad because my mum also took me everywhere. But it just seems that my dad stuck in my head more. So it's mum. Um, but yeah, we used to listen to some songs <laughs> on the radio like um, Katie Mellower. Uh, I think I pronounced that right. The closest thing to crazy. All right, okay, yeah. Uh, so we used to sing that, probably because we were both a bit crazy. Um, <laughs> uh, Bad Day, um, Shakira was in there. Um, they were probably the main three that we used to sort of listen to. I'm sure he will remember different ones and a lot more. Um, but, yeah, it was it was great to have that bonding time with my dad more than anything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 
<laughs> so, yep, I... how would you describe Sunderland fans in three words? Um, uh, three nice words. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Any three words. <laughs> uh, passionate. Faithful. Mm-hmm. Committed. I don't know if that's the same word I wrote down. Uh, what, com- committed as in like to a men- mental asylum? Is that, that what you mean? Yeah. Uh, more like committed as in like faithful to the club, like okay. stuck by the club. Yeah. Um, <laughs> crucial. Good Lord, that's four. Sorry, I thought commitment and faithful were like similar words, so I went with uh, four. She gave us a words, bonus I- one. <laughs> yes, she did, yeah. I tell you what, I hope so- my English department at school is watching this because they were unbelievably good words that I've just pulled out. <laughs> <laughs> she got the thesaurus out. If if they're not, Steph, you can just you know you can uh, send them a link to the video. They can watch it back later. Absolutely. I will even tag tag the minute that you send it. So just spell them because I won't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what was your funniest incident as a Sunderland player then oh. that you can remember? As a player or just in general? Uh, both now. <laughs> Right, so I'll tell you about a story one time, and I'm going to make myself look stupid, but it's okay. So we were obviously on an away trip, and we were staying in the hotel. Um, and for some reason, we're all like in the same room watching a film, I think. I can't remember what we're watching, but we're all chilling watching a film. Um, and I got a text message through off my friend, and it said, uh, one of our friends has just had a baby. And I was like, all right. Like, so I read, anyway, I read the message, but I didn't think much of it. And then a couple of minutes later, I read it again. And I said to like all the lasses in the room, I said, here, I said, uh, my friend's just had a baby. Um, and called the baby pen envelope. Right? And everyone was like, what? And I was like, who calls a baby pen envelope? Like, what kind of name is pen envelope? And anyway, like, we're all laughing about it. No one thought anything of it. And I was, oh, no. And I kept going like, pen envelope. I mean, it was, I think it was Kira Ramshaw, believe it or not, who still plays, was sat next to us and Kelly Mack was on the other side and Kira gives a look at the name. So I showed her the text. Well, she burst out laughing. And I was like, what's so funny? Like, what's so, I don't get it, Kira. And she was like, mate, that doesn't say pen envelope. It says Penelope. <laughs> well, the whole room just burst out laughing. <laughs> Uh, and ever since then, it's been an ongoing talk. <laughs> obviously, I said pen envelope. Pen envelope. Like, if you ask any of the girls that were in the room at the time, everybody will remember that. <laughs> Brilliant. It was just so funny. <laughs> uh, but again, it just it just showed the team spirit that was there. Um, yeah. It was just like, it was just everybody was just got on really well. And it was just, just great crack. It really was. And I think it's what kept you there for so long. Oh, that's brilliant, man. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to go over about well, nah, I'm going to talk about any. What did you think? So at the start of this, Paulie had asked about your take on the uh, women versus men's, like the pay debate in mm-hmm. the US. Yeah. Obviously, there's been a lot of stuff with like uh, court cases and walkouts and stuff. Right. Uh, for them to get through pay. What's What's your opinion on that? Um, as in, like, should they get the same money? Yes, that's because that's that's what that's they're, what they're basically for. vying for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's 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 very difficult. Um, I agree with it. I agree, why should you get less money? Because you're a female. However, um, females don't generate as much money. So if I look at Sunland Football Club, Sunland ladies' team don't generate as much money as what some men's team do. So the money pumping into the the men's game and the women's game is great. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the the revenue, let's say, that Sunland men make compared to the subsection of Sunland women is very different. So as a, mm-hmm. as any owner or any business person, if I was a business person, I'm not sure how you can justify that um, in terms of the revenue being the same mm-hmm. um, in that respect. However, um, to play devil's advocate, I do think that women are very underpaid for what mm-hmm. they do. Um, mm-hmm. it's, you know, ultimately, it's also their full-time job of being a footballer. So why, just because of their sex, are they... Mm-hmm classed as you know less paid um don't get the benefits etc mm. etc um i think you know there's pros and cons to it all but i would say you yeah. know ultimately um i don't see the difference to men and women and i don't know why yeah. they don't get paid the same but yeah. if you were to fire as a business sector then i do get it a little bit mm-hmm. i think i, I think you said this there a little bit oh it's very it was very switzerland yeah. earlier, i think so um 
But with, again, you said there's, there's a lot of grey areas there as well because, yeah. like you said before, I think rev if you just look at it from a revenue stream itself, yeah. it's difficult. But as you said before, they're doing the same job, putting yeah. in the same effort. I mean, it, you could even argue um, it can also be more difficult from the perspective that if they've got a family too, it's not yeah, as yeah. straightforward. I, mean, I think so. it's only just become recently that actually um, women's footballers now get maternity pay before that. Oh, okay. Beforehand, they never actually even got maternity pay. So yeah. for a woman footballer to become pregnant, what yeah. that was it, you just lost your contract. Yeah. Uh, very much like... And, and uh, potentially a career as well. Yeah, and the area of injury. You know, a, yeah. lot of, a lot of girls become injured and then lose contracts. Well, that's that's not fair. Yeah. Um, but it, there's lots of grey areas and I think, you know, you could sit here and debate it all day long. Uh, I wish I had the power to have that much influence over things. <laughs> Um, but I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> one day, one day Stephanie, you might have all that power. You never well, know. This is very true. This is very true. You, but yet. put this way, you've been very political <laughs> in some of your answers. So I think that you might have a, a career yes, somewhere. I can see you in Downing Street one day. So, <laughs> you know, good Lord. Um, but before before we close out, before I ask you if you've got anything else to share, I'm just going to remind people at home that uh, obviously we, ha we mentioned at the start that we had the uh, from the terraces quiz question. And that will be. How many goals did Stephanie score for Sunland? So those people who are watching, you send your answer to Sons of Liberty SAFC at gmail.com. That's Sons of Liberty SAFC at gmail.com. Uh, again, we'll just randomly draw out. Uh, let me just say the first person that emails me will be the person that gets the prize. And we'll also be doing the prize in next week's talking too. Um, Steph, is there anything else that you want to add or uh, any no. shout outs you want to give? So I'm a uh, big, big Kev must be your dad then, I'm assuming. Yeah, my dad's, my dad's Kev and my mum's Sue. Uh, they were struggling to get the link, though. They keep messaging me, so I don't know if they've got on or not. Uh, <laughs> we'll see, I'll find out when I go, though. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure. Who knows? They'll just tell me off. No, I'm good. Thank you very much for having us. <laughs> no, it's been brilliant. Any yourself, do you want to add anything else? Well, I'd just like to point out my dad commented that he said it was nice to see his T-shirt still in use. Uh, um, I did see that, yeah. I did see yeah. that. <laughs> but no, that's been great. I really Brilliant. enjoyed it. That's excellent. Okay, okay, so I'd like to... Uh, shirt on. Well, yeah. I put mine on. No. So I'd like to personally thank Steph for her time and obviously your service to the club as well. Uh, Ellie, I want to thank you. It's been, you've been a wonderful co-host. And I want to wish you well with uh, Virginia, uh, West Virginia Tech uh, Golden Bears and all the best for next season and beyond. Uh, thank the viewers for um, tuning in. And then obviously to remind everybody, next week we have another club legend joining us in Gordon Armstrong. So he'll be uh, here for our talk in next week. So everybody, thanks again. Um, stay well, stay safe. Are you ready? And keep the faith. Look at that, man. So cheesy. Aww. So, all right, guys. <laughs> take care. Stephanie, thanks so much for your time. Ellie, thanks. brilliant. Thanks so much. You guys, take care. Cheers. Thanks, see you. Bye. 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 Bye.